Welcome to the world of moduli. My name is Herwig Hauser. I'm from the University of Vienna. And what you see and hear now, that's a kind of trailer for my class, for my international course on moduli this upcoming fall, starting in October. So <clears throat> it will be an appetizer to raise your appetite for this class and the theory which is behind. So today, I will just give you a short impression what is going on with moduli. So the class is of general interest. I am not talking to specialists. I welcome both students and researchers, professors, seniors. Everybody is welcome. I want to give you the flavor of the theory of moduli in the simplest case, just endpoints on the projective line, and show you the interplay between algebraic geometry, the theory of moduli, and combinatorics and graph theory. Yeah. Because, as we will see, the moduli space of the endpoints on the protective line is very closely related to what we call phylogenetic trees. A phylogenetic tree is something which is known in biology, but which also appears in mathematics. And it appears that these phylogenetic trees codify combinatorial information about the moduli space. Okay? And that's a very exciting interplay between the two fields. So in order to prove something inside algebraic geometry, we use combinatorial information on the graph, on the phylogenetic tree, to find our proof and to develop the technique. So I hope you will like this. I very much. Uh, enjoy working on this topic. So this is a cooperation with Josef Schicho from University of Linz and his students, Seayue Ki. So it is really work and research in progress. So it is another approach to the classical theory of Mumford, Knudsen, and Delin, but with a different eye. Okay. So I'll be very brief today. I just give you a hint what is going on. Okay, so maybe we start with a projective line. I do it over the reals because I, because I can only draw on the reals. So let's take here. This will be infinity. Here we have zero and a point one. Okay, these are kind of selected, distinguished points. And then what do we do? So this, let me write this P1. And the whole story is about endpoints, which I draw in red. So these are n points. And then we are going to move these endpoints. So uh, I don't give them a name, or maybe I could call them, but yeah, maybe let's write it x1, x2, x3, and so on. And now we, we take the automorphism group of P1, and that's linear algebra. This is PGL2 of our ground field. Let's say the real or the complex numbers acts on P1. We will explain in the class how this acts. For today, we just need the following that so this is a fact any three distinct points. in P1 can be sent to any other three distinct points by a unique element phi of PGL2. That's a fact from 
linear algebra or projective geometry. So let me try to, to show you a little bit what's going on. So let's maybe take this point here. So it, it starts to move. And we don't only take one point, we take three points. So let's, for instance, take these three points and they move. Now, by this fact, which is written here, the other points will also start to move. Okay? They will stay distinct because it's an isomorphism. Okay? It's a bijection of P1. But everything starts to move. Okay? And the problem of moduli, maybe I can write this on the side, is we take these endpoints, which is p1 to the n. So here we have our x equals x1 up to xn. And what we want to do, we have the action of pgl2. So we want to study this up to pgl2. So this is what we could call the orbit space of the group action. But we have to take a little bit of care because we assume the endpoints here to be distinct. So let me write a tilde here yeah, to indicate that all the entries are distinct. Okay, x1 different, x2, x1 different, x3, and so on. Otherwise, this fact does not work. Okay? And then it's not very hard to show. What you do is you move the three selected points. Let me take these three selected points here. I hope you can see it. Yeah? You move them to special positions. And so you move the first one with the PGL two actions to 0, the second one to the point 1, and the last one to infinity. And then the other points, x4, x5, x6, they have a fixed position. Yeah, and this will be a distinguished representative of our orbit. I repeat, you choose x1, x2, x3. Here the notation is maybe wrong. You move them to 0, 1, and infinity, and then the position of the other ones describe uniquely the orbit. Okay? Now, it turns out, and that's kind of obvious, that you get something which is smooth. Actually, it's a p1 to the n minus 3. But it is not, this construction is not symmetric because you chose three of these points. That's the first disadvantage. And second, the space which you get is not closed. It is not compact. Okay? So uh, the big story of Delin, Mumford, and Knudsen was to compactify. Compactify this space. And if you go to the original papers, you will see that this is high-flown machinery. It uses a lot of technique. Yeah? And uh, it's difficult to access. Okay? So what we will do, we will present a very easy and gentle-going approach to this problem, to this compactification. Okay. So as you see, we are using here a light board, which was built in the Faculty of Mathematics at the University of Vienna. I hope you like this format. It's kind of talking to the student directly, and you see, you see what I write. But I also have to erase. So I will have to erase now, and then I will talk for two minutes about phylogenetic trees, and then we are done for this appetizer and trailer. Okay. So this goes as follows. It's a little bit different than on a usual blackboard. It's like uh, cleaning, like cleaning <coughs> windows. 
Of course, uh, everything is recorded, and one can. So you see, it's really fantastic machine. And then we can use the blackboard again. Actually, it is called lightboard because it's transparent. Okay. So let me talk a little bit about phylogenetic trees. So I will draw a phylogenetic tree. Maybe I first write it. This was not so good. Phylogenetic trees. And this appears, a drawing of a phylogenetic tree appears in a book of Darwin. Okay. And such a tree is a graph. It is a finite graph without cycles. So let me draw it like this. And there is, here you have the vertices, which I draw as dots like this. Okay, so you, it is a tree in the sense it has no cycles. And then, in addition to this, which is kind of simple-minded, maybe you also have a vertex here. So the point is that you don't allow vertices of degree 2 or 1. I mean, you allow degree 1, but only in a special case. So what you do here, now you add leaves. So this is the graph here, okay. plus leaves. And I will draw the leaves in a different color. So like this. You may have a leaf here. The number of leaves is quite arbitrary. It's the number of points you have on the protective line. But what you require is that each blue vertex has degree at least 3. So here, at this one, you will have degree 4. Here you have degree 4 because you have three blue edges and one green, the yellow one. Here you have degree 3. So if we would erase this leaf here, which does not work, so maybe I just cancel it like this. If you wouldn't have this one, this would be uh, not. This would have degree two, which is not allowed. So you do have here a leaf, and then you see that the vertex here in the middle, it has degree two at the moment. So it has to have a leaf in order to have degree three. So let me write this down. All inner vertices, which are the blue ones, have degree at least 3. Degree is just the number of edges starting at this, ver this vertex. And the leaves have degree 1. One and we have n leaves. This is the number of points in P1. And now the story starts, but I will stop. Now you look at these trees and they codify codify moduli spaces. 
modular space of endpoints in P1. And that's, I think, a very nice story. And I want to tell you this story in this class in fall. For instance, what you can do, you can, you can cut a tree in two. So you delete this edge here, and you get two trees. And this corresponds to a construction in the moduli space, okay. which is essentially taking a kind of fiber product of moduli spaces. What you can also do, you can add edges. If you add an edge, and then you also have to add some leaves in order to have the degree condition, this corresponds to what is called a universal family of moduli spaces. <clears throat> so this is the world where we will move. We will move in algebraic geometry using basics of commutative algebra and algebraic geometry. We do it over any field, but you can imagine that you do it over the complex numbers. And then we'll do uh, this kind of geometric combinatorics. And we look at this graph or this tree, and we will detect method constructions which we can apply for our moduli spaces. Okay? So that's the program. And this was a short overview of what would expect you. So this class is, will be an international class. So it will be only digital, and it will be only for students of selected university, mostly on the Iberian Peninsula. Okay? And uh, I can give certificates for, for having passed the exam or, or the, visited the course. But uh, for juridical reasons, these certificates cannot be official diplomas, but your own university agreed to, to accept these certificates as part of your curriculum and your studies. OK. So that's what I wanted to tell you today. Thank you for, your, for listening. Thank you for your interest. And I would be happy to meet you again in fall. We start at the beginning of October. And I just invite you to send me an email if you are interested. And then I will put you on the list, on the mailing list. You can always unsubscribe if you don't want to continue. And then you will get all the information with the dates and the way how you connect to the, to the Zoom link and so on. Okay. That's all for today. Thank you, and see you soon. Bye-bye.